Greetings everyone and welcome to the Shrouded Isle, a new short series for the channel in which we are going to be the managers of a cult. Yes, this is a cult management simulation. Think cult in the Lovecraftian sense. So, secluded community on an island, ancient god slumbering beneath the waves, soon to awaken, punish the sinful, reward the worthy, with perhaps a bit of a skewed idea of what is worthy and what is sinful. That is the Shrouded Isle. Uh, definitely not a normal kind of game for my channel, but I have put an hour or two into it while testing and learning the mechanics and I have to say this is an incredibly enjoyable experience. It's actually, despite the subject matter, a fairly chilled out gaming experience because of the way the gameplay uh, unfolds. It's also got this very um, Lovecraftian sort of aesthetic, or at least what I would consider a Lovecraftian aesthetic. You can change this, by the way, if Scorching Light is a little bit too scorching for your delicate retinas, you can have Poison Ivy, or you can even have Sacramental Wine. But we're going to be going with Scorching Light, and yes, this is the entire color palette for this playthrough as a result. Now we're going to start a new game and uh, overwrite my test save and see how things go. 497 years ago our founders saw that humanity would perish except the worthy. Our Lord will return in glory to reward the faithful. Yet there are sinners in our community. As the High Priest, I must select a sinner to sacrifice every season. Three years until Judgment Day. If we are free from sin, he will save us from this suffering. Very ominous indeed. New season begins, the earth is dark and inviting. Now then, this at its core, it's actually a really simple game to get your head around. It's got a very simple mechanic, and that is that you need to manage 10 resources. Pardon me while I uh, open my drink here. Now, these 10 resources are the favor you, you carry with the uh, five great houses of the Shrouded Isle, and also the general state of the populace. In, split up into five categories their ignorance their fervor their discipline their penitence and their obedience now each of the main houses has a specific um duty to uh they're, they're the the custodian of that particular virtue as as the people of the shrouded isle consider it uh kegney are the keepers of ignorance they they ensure that a a uh, acceptable level of ignorance is maintained amongst the population. They own the farmlands, providing sustenance to the village and house, uh, hosting book burnings. They're currently at plus 20 satisfaction with us. Now, the uh, amount that each house likes you or dislikes you is completely randomly generated, as are the much more important aspects, and that is the people in each house, but we'll get to that in a moment. Iosefka are the ones who manage the fervor, ensuring that the population is fervent in their devotions to our god. The Iosefka are a hardy lot, excelling at carpentry and masonry, building great monuments to our lord. They're currently at minus 40 favor with me, that's not so great. Cadwell is a family of miners and merchants. Cadwells are the wealthiest in the village, and it is uh, their, their duty to ensure that discipline is maintained amongst the workers, amongst the general populace. Uh, however, it is House Everson that uh, keep a watch over how penitent our population is. They are the most devout followers of Chernobog which is our slumbering god, wielding whips and hearing confessions. And finally, House Blackborn. The Blackborns control the guardsmen and village, uh, sorry, the guardsmen of the village and interrogate rebels as needed. They are, of course, in charge of maintaining obedience in the population. Now, the real way that you interact with these houses is through the people in the house. There are six people in every house, and you'll notice these question marks here. Each person is completely randomly generated, and everyone has one virtue and one vice. Now, the, the vices and virtues are randomly generated, as are the 
the extent of the virtue or the vice, how extreme it is. And uh, that is a very big part of the game, is working out who has what virtue and what vice and finding the particularly sinful for um, sentencing to um, sacrificial um, duties on the sacrificial altar, underneath the sacrificial knife on the sacrificial night. Yeah, no one likes that part. And every house dislikes it when it's one of theirs they get, uh, that's under the sacrificial knife. However, it is something we need to do. And that is one of the big parts in balancing um, how much each house likes us. But we can rename these villages, you may have noticed. Now this, I'm sure, despite the odds of being sacrificed, is going to be something that people people would, would like to do. We may not get to it in this particular run through. Um, you have only three years and you need to pick someone to be sacrificed each season. But do let me know in the comments if you're interested in getting a rename and uh, specifically pick your house. Are, are you are you sort of the house Slytherin or house Gryffindor kind of person? There are no house Gryffindors here. I'm, I'm afraid there's just five different shades of Slytherin. But let me know which house you belong to and I will see about getting you renamed. However, we're going to start this uh, season off with a letter. These random events pop up every now and then. Uh, Edin Cadwell reports that Rada Everson has called Harnabog fictional. While Rada is not the most ardent worshipper, there is no proof that she disavowed our faith. Hmm. She's full of fervor as well. And you're disobedient, that's the only thing I know about you. As Everson will not like this if I condemn Rada. Demand evidence from Eden. Fervor will suffer. Release Rada. House Cadwell would not like this. Um, House Cadwell is on a fairly good turns of this, but uh, yeah, we're going to release Rada. Rada is grateful for your mercy, as Cadwell mutters that perhaps you are not the sworn leader Harnobog desires. We lost 15 uh, favour with Cadwell, but gained 10 favour with Efferson, which is actually a good uh, exchange in my opinion. And Penitence plus 10 as well. Not bad, all things told. I actually like that. That has put us in a bit of a better starting position. Right, now, the chief way to find out what uh, people have is by appointing them as an advisor. We need to appoint one advisor per season from each house. But first, if the house likes us at least a little bit, or is at least not very unhappy with us, they will allow us to inquire after some of the people in their house. If they like us a lot, they might allow us to inquire multiple times. Now, really what you want to try and do is find out about vices. Those are the more important to discover quickly. Um, Bella, let's find out about you. Okay, well, all we know about Bella is that she's full of fervor and undisciplined. I'm going to appoint you as my advisor, and we should possibly find out a little bit more. I feel most at home behind the pulpit at your side. Uh, okay, fair enough. Right, let's find out the next person. We're going to be going to Yosefka. Now, we're not going to be able to inquire at all. I hope our advisor serves you well. I do too. Uh, so we're just firing blind here. We're going to take Eva. She lacks fervor. Actually, no, we're not going to take... Well, you know what? There's, it's not actually too bad to take someone who lacks fervor if they're going to produce fervor. But if I take them and that's a particularly egregious vice, so they they really lack fervor, they could end up doing more damage to fervor than they improve by working as a member of House Yosefka, and thus overall we would lose favor throughout. So it might be better to go with someone else. There are lots of obedient people here. Sure, I'll take you. You've got a virtue of being obedient. There we go. What? Me? I, I, I am... I, can I help? Uh, well, I hope so, though your your uh, sudden panic when I selected you makes me worry. Right, we're going to try and pick Milos. Disciplined and disobedient. <laughs> How? Is the only... Only question I have here, but we're going to appoint you as an our advisor. You will have a slight increase of discipline, a slight decrease to obedience, and you will also raise penitence when you work, which is very important. Next up, how's Cadwell? Now, you only like me enough to allow me to pick once. Uh, let's go with you. Full of fervor, but you are unrepentant. Very well, let's appoint you. And finally, the Blackborn Estate. Let's do those too much. You're penitent, but you know too much. Um, Mika was a very bright child and learned to read at an early age. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, there are, as I've been mentioning, different le levels of vices and virtues. And you really need to find specifically bad sinners. Ones who've got a vice that is 30 points or more. Because that's a major sin. And uh, if you don't mouse over things, you're, you're, as the high priest, you know these people. You've seen them grow up in, in many cases. The fact that you know too much and you were a very bright child makes me worry that perhaps you are indeed a scholar. And that would be very bad. But we're going to bring you along and see how this pans out. With that said that the first time it isn't actually as important to select. It only starts really becoming important to pick the people once you're at once you've got an imbalance in the uh, various um, resources here because you then want to pick people specifically so that their virtues will help prop up a, a faltering um, virtue down here. Now then, we need to pick one to three advisors. You don't have to pick three. The less you pick, the more intensely they will, do, they will affect the, the virtue that they're buffing. But if you do pick three, you're going to get more chance to find out about people. So, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to have a, a minus on discipline. So let's make sure that we've got someone who is disciplined. And, um, you know, too much. Yeah, sure. Okay, we're going to kind of balance this all out and just see if I can get things. I'm not perfect, but I will serve. Good, good. A great outcome from Bella. Well done. Bella discovered a cache of old world books. They burned merrily in the town square. Well done, Bella. You're keeping people ignorant. I admire you for your for your faith. Bella was discovered to be charismatic. Bella gives a beautiful sermon, stirring every heart. Plus one to further. And Bella's vice. Bella arrives late to every advisor meeting, mumbling an apology. Oh, I don't know about this, Bella. I'd like to trust you, but I don't know yet. That was only a very minor virtue there. Average outcome for uh, Milos. Milos dutifully whipped the sinful, adhering to the rites of penitence. But we have discovered Milos's virtue, and that is uh, still probably a minor, I would say. But, you know, it's, it's on the, the high end of minor. Milos was discovered to be athletic. Milos leads the village in morning exercise classes. Milos revised the code of laws with a new, more confusing interpretation and has had a negative effect on obedience. And finally, Miko Blackborn. All right. And Miko interrogated townspeople. It seems a few parents conspired to hide their children from the ritual. Oh, those scallywags. I don't blame them, though. Miko personally encourages more confessors to come forward. And Miko polls the town on their thoughts about a library? What is this? Miko. No. Not gonna have my people learn to read and write, my lord. How terrible. Right, now, this is the effect of selecting someone from a house. Those you select gain a certain amount, and those you don't select lose a certain amount. Now, again, this is multiplied if you only select uh, a few people from um, the, the choice. If you select just one person, their, um, their favor will rise by, I think, 15 or 20, something around this. So we might actually do that for Adjudicator Yosefka. Okay, so we learned a little bit about people. <clears throat> uh, right, we could take Vasin Yosefka and uh, make his, his matron proud. Um, we don't know what else you do. This would rise further a decent amount. I really do need to find someone who is sinful, though. This is actually quite, quite important. More important than rising your overall uh, happiness with us. So, I'm actually going to take you. There we go. Let's find someone. Vasin urged the laborers in carving and sanding, and a small shrine to our god was crafted. Well done you. We don't know how they affected our community because we don't know what their vice is. Vasin's virtue. Vasin was discovered to be timid. Vasin acts as your eyes and ears throughout the village. Obedience plus one. Okay, well, it's not, not terrible. It's only a small virtue, though. Uh, Bogdan's virtue, Bogdan's vice. When asked about his sins, Bogdan shrugs and changes the subject. I'm not liking that. That was a decent drop. Um, Bogdan was discovered to be charismatic. Uh, all very minor virtues, honestly. But Bogdan sees forbidden dessert and fine cloth, ensuring steadfast focus on prayer. Well done, Bogdan. And average outcome there, interrogated townspeople. There seems a few parents conspired to hide their children. 
Miko is discovered to be curious. Miko asks many difficult questions about the origin of Kharnobog and the village. Oh, don't like that. But you're, at least it's not a major sin, so you're off the hook. Miko personally encourages more confessors to come forward. Now, this person's in a bad state. I was a little bit hoping that Miko was going to be a scholar. Because that would be our... Uh, that would be the uh, sacrificial lamb, as it were. But we do not know. I'm going to have to select all three. Well, actually, I can't afford to not select you. So I'm going to select you as well and just hope. Uh, see. Got a better chance of finding out if these people are particularly sinful. I need someone that I can, I can, I can sacrifice without, without doubt. Otherwise, their families will be extremely unhappy. But I'm worried because I've not actually seen any of our... Um, anything drop particularly hard. So I don't think we've got anyone with a major sin. Now, that might sound great, but it's not. It really isn't. Someone more or less possibly not sinful is going to die. Uh, Bella was discovered to be a flirt. Bella's rumored to have taken on yet another lover. Oh, Bella. Oh, Bella. Ah, damn charisma. Uh, okay, well, you did your job well, but with a flirt minus 20, um, it could be worse. That's not a major vice, but it's on the high end of minor. So, okay. Bogdan sees forbidden desserts and fine cloths, ensuring said fat focus on prayer. Bogdan gives a beautiful sermon, stirring every heart. Bogdan was discovered to be a narcissist. A Bogdan fan club sprang up, though you su suspect Bogdan started it. Wow, all of you had, had uh, minor uh, vices. That's unfortunate for us. Milos was discovered to be cynical. Milos gives a confusing sermon about how our thoughts and beliefs matter less than our actions. Oh, Milos. That was deeply unsettling. Okay, well, the season's end draws in the air. A sacrifice must be made to protect the village. I have no choice. I can't spare everyone. I have to sacrifice someone. And unfortunately, it's probably going to be Bogdan or Bella because you have the least virtuous characteristics. Um, it's just that whether I find a charismatic flirt to be more offensive to the to the sensibilities of Harnabog or a charismatic narcissist. And I think a charismatic narcissist it is. Farewell, Bogdan Cadwell. Farewell. Major virtue, the ooh, villagers will be horrified by Bogdan's death and lose fervor. It's not that major, is it? Mind advice, the sacrifice will encourage penitence. Cad House Cadwell will be outraged since Bogdan's transgressions are forgivable. That's not that major. It's really not. It's really not. Okay, sacrifice. Bogdan, your fan club ends here. You got too popular and we liked you too much so we decided to stab you. That is how we show our appreciation. Uh, there's no blood on the altar. That's a bad sign, I think. Through sacrifice, thy will be done. We sacrifice the life of Bogdan in the name of Harnabog and the good of our people. Our condolences to Cadwell. Sacrifice for a minor sin. House Cadwell simmers with quiet resentment. House Cadwell approval, minus 50. If you sacrifice someone with a major sin, they just kind of accept it and it's only minus 30. No one will ever like their children being sacrificed, no matter how sinful they are. Other houses, though, approve, mostly because they didn't get sacrificed. And the villagers speak of Bogdan as a holy martyr, perishing for the greater good. Penitence plus 10 and further, minus 5. Ah, the night before the new season, a whisper caresses your dreams. My faithful servant, I await your devotion. Encourage discipline, denial of worldly pleasures, the teller of lies. Give her to me. Very well. Interestingly, give her. So we have a bit of a clue there. Okay, how's Cadwell? Minus 20 now. That's unfortunate because it's going to be hard to pull you up. But, eh, okay, it could be a lot worse. All right. Uh, Kegney. Each day is like the last. Indeed. So tell her of lies. Tell her of lies. Um, Svetlana was a very talkative child, as I recall. Excitable and restless. You have a lot of daughters in your house, but let's begin the inquiry. It's full of fervor. Okay. Um, well, you're coming along. Next up, Yosefka. We can't inquire about anyone in Yosefka. 
and I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Um, Eva, I guess. Let's go with you. Just don't touch me. Oh, my lord. Efferson. Right, let's begin the inquiry. Uh, so many daughters, why? Damn it! Zoya has a soft and soothing voice like a dove. Rada blushes easily, much to everyone's amusement. Wendelin answers most questions with strange sounds and animal noises. Uh, Misha was called the advocate as a child for constant arguing with her parents and siblings. Um, uh, Zoya, lacking further. Mm, well, you're it. Let's hope we can find an actually sinful person this time. Alright, begin inquiry. Oh, I certainly hope it's not House Cadwell. Because they would be very unhappy if I if I slew one of their uh, one of their, the members of the house twice in a row. So we're gonna have to avoid that. Yes, from your side I will more readily spot evildoers. And finally, Blackborn Estate. Who do you wish to join your council this season? Well, I'm curious about Danica. Is a very neat and organized person with a very with never a hair out of place. Uh, Laszlo, no Danica, it is knows too much. Not sure that's going to necessarily give us the liar. You don't need to go for the liar. Each house will have multiple sinners, or typically they do. Fania asks very good questions. Um, well, Danica, you're coming along. We're going to see if we can find a great sinner amongst you. Okay, first and foremost, we need to try and find out something about the people we're working with. Edwin Cadwell. Also, I already know who has sinned. Now for their punishment. Uh, okay. Uh, and I think we want to increase fervor, but you're lacking fervor, which is a bit of a problem, but... Uh, let's find out. Eva, are you our sinner? Discipline above all, your excellency. I hope so. And... Hmm. Ignorance is doing quite well. We could go with Danica. But actually, I'm just going to take two. Hopefully you improve the uh, situation a little bit. Oh, gentle minus two. So you're not the liar. Uh, Eva's behavior has an unknown impact on our community. Eva was discovered to be gentle. Eva spends some of the month's budget on cushions for the cathedral's pews. I mean, that is nice and all, but no, it's not. It's a, it's a vice bad, Eva. Eva urged her laborers in carving and sanding. A small shrine to our god was crafted, but, uh, yeah, net result, low favor. Even seized forbidden desserts and fine cloth, ensuring a steadfast focus on prayer. Ooh! Eden revised the Code of Laws with a new, more confusing interpretation. Obedience, massive hit. Okay, well, you are almost certainly a scoundrel. Because that was a huge hit to uh, to that. I almost don't want to find out if you're the, the one we want, but damn. Uh, let's go for you two. In fact, let's go for you three and try to restore some stuff. Ouch, that really hurt. Okay, average outcome, Svetlana encouraged the town and found one old world book to burn a ritual fire. And Svetlana's vice, Svetlana arrives late to every advisor meeting, mumbling an apology. That was a decent hit as well. Dutifully whipped the sinful, adhering to the rites of penitence. Zoya discovered to be superstitious. Zoya foretells good fortunes and reads good omens everywhere. Ignorance plus five. You'll notice uh, Zoya's ceremonies aren't as well attended as others. Further took a decent hit, but that is a major virtue there. Superstitious, major virtue. That's very, very good to see. Ugh, you actually had a negative effect on obedience. That is super bad. And you had a negative effect on ignorance. But uh, you are chased, so uh, discipline went up a little bit. Now, you want to keep it above this line, because that's what Khernabog desires. However, can be a bit of a problem. Hmm. Alright. Well, I'm quite concerned. I feel you are realistically the only person who is likely to be deeply sinful. 
I know that you're not sinful enough to really justify it, and also your house would hate me forever. They would go full on rebellious if I if I pick you, but I need to try and find out what's going on. Obedience is going to suffer a lot from this. Obedience is going to suffer a lot. But we should be offered an opportunity to improve things. Um, we'll see. Uh, let's leave it at that. Obe the disobedience is going to have an even greater hit if there's only two people, but we need to have a chance of finding out. Rebellious. There we are. Minus 30. I knew it. You scoundrel, you. Obedience minus 15. Eden was discovered to be rebellious. Eden argues with you in front of the congregation, undermining your authority. Oh, my lord. Even if that was an amazing saying that you were going to be going under the knife, Milado. You do not argue with the high priest, especially in front of the flock. Even see these forbidden desserts and fine cloth. I mean, well done on that, but you scoundrel, you. Only average? Damn it. Danica interrogated townspeople, it seems a few parents conspired to hide children from the ritual. We've discovered that she is a linguist. Danica was discovered to be a linguist. Danica is seen distributing educational pamphlets on the sciences and arts. Oh, Danica. Where did your parents go wrong, eh? Oh well, this is going to be awful. I really shouldn't have brought him along. I really shouldn't have brought him along. But, uh, oh well. This is going to, they're going to hate this. The season's end draws in the air. A sacrifice must be made to protect the village. Now I could make a political sacrifice here. And get rid of Eva. We don't know. Uncertain virtue um, would be discipline we'd lose. And they'd become rebellious because they're already so low. So realistically, um, we could lose Blackborn. They'd become dissatisfied. They'd lose like 50, so they'd be minus 30. Or I could get rid of a major sinner. Um, has Cadwell be outraged since they were selected last season? They are going to flat out name me their enemy number one. But you need to be gone. It'll have an effect on penitence, but not a great one. I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice someone who is only sort of naughty in order to save you, Eden. You rebellious cur. It, honestly, if you hadn't argued with me in front of everyone, maybe I would have selected someone else. But no, that, was, that sin was just far too great. Ah, we must cleanse this sin before Haranobog awakens. There we go. Blood everywhere. Good. Uh, we sacrifice the life of Eden in the name of Haranabog and the good of our people. Our condolences to Cadwell. House Cadwell is enraged by your tyranny and declares you their enemy. Minus 100. Other houses approval plus 5. Now that is mostly because I picked them twice in a row and they're just really annoyed now. The village have praised Haranabog for ridding the community of a blighted soul. Obedience plus 15, but penitence minus 10. This is not all sunshine and rainbows. Uh, warning, House Cadwell are defying my authority. I must appease them this season or risk revolt. Now, that is flat out telling me, yeah, either pull this back or you die. So, yeah. Uh, you're gentle, I know this much. Uh, I would like to bring up obedience. So, Ivan, I'm going to appoint you. I can't um, inquire after anyone at the moment. Cadwell, who can I bring along? Hmm. Well, I, I guess I'll appoint an advisor. Um, Nikolai, let's go with Nikolai Cadwell. And the Blackborn Estate, let's begin an inquiry. I need to know a little bit more. What about you? You're full of fervor, but you are disobedient. I'm going to appoint you, Ladislas. And F and yes, it, it, it probably will be a little bit weird when all these people are named after, after my viewers and I'm picking which ones to sacrifice. I hope you all understand, it'll be nothing personal. Well, I mean, unless you argue with me in front of my the congregation, then it is going to be absolutely personal. But lacking that, you it, it will just be business, I assure you. Um, we still know that we're looking for a lady. Now, I don't even want to imagine it to you because that is a brilliant quality there. Undisciplined, maybe, or rather. You come along. By our blood and sweat do we worship. Praise the Lord, indeed. Now, please don't make me regret saving you early on. Because I sacrificed Cadwell friendship for that. If it turns out, it turns out that you were 
A scallywag all along, I, I will look quite the fool. Ignorance is a blessing like the shade of the summer sun. How lovely, how a way to talk about being ignorant. Uh, I'm not sure that that's a good thing, actually. You're violent, <laughs> which is a virtue. Why does this game make, why does this game, oh my lord. What did I expect? I'm playing a cult simulator. Oh my goodness. Svet Svetlana, come along, join us. You undisciplined cur, you. Right, begin the season. This is uh, autumn of year one. All right, I want to kind of know about all of you, please. Uh, uh, actually, no, let's fix Cadwell first. Go, just by yourself, just you. Average outcome, Nikolai sees forbidden desserts and fine cloth, ensuring steadfast focus on prey, and had some random effect on our community. Nikolai uh, was discovered to be just. Many villagers come to seek Nikolai's counsel on personal problems. Now, watch these closely because I only really update this in the next area or so. A rebellious brought back up. I'm probably going to have to sp spend the next season allowing you to do that again. And boom. Did anything move? Hmm, I actually don't know how you affected anything, Nikolai. What is some? Okay. Now, at this point, I should be able to get by with just Nikolai doing one, uh, a small thing. Okay, begin. This should help us out a little bit. Actually, yeah, go for it. Poor Alkin, Svetlana found only a few scribbled scraps of old world literature. There were no bonfires. Oh, Svetlana, why? You're an embezzler. Wow, okay, so we found a major sinner. When asked about the month's finances, Svetlana claims to have lost all of the receipts. Yes, indeed. Oh, Svetlana. Uh, Nikolai sees forbidden dessert and fine cloth, and is rumored to be undisciplined. Nikolai arrives late to every advisor meeting, mumbling an apology. Well, that's rather unfortunate, but uh, it's, it's fine, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. Um, Rada dutifully whipped the sinful, adhering to the rites of penitence. Rada spends extra time in the monument construction sites, plus fervor. And Rada arrives late to every advisor meeting, mumbling an apology. Not acceptable. Now, has that pulled you out of danger zone? No, it has not. Kinda need to pull you out of the danger zone, I'm gonna be honest. We, we can now just kind of sink this time into getting Cadwell out of this, uh, this slump that they're in. But it's at the cost of other things. It's at the cost of, of finding out more about other people. I think we're just going to do this and pull this up by 10 instead. Because that will move you to 60, which I think is, is good enough. Uh, there we go. And this will also pull up obedience a little bit. Wow, penitence will be way up there. It's going to be amazing. Begin. Average outcome. Nikolai sees forbidden desserts and fine cloth. Uh, many villagers come to seek Nikolai's counsel. Nikolai was discovered to be gluttonous. Nikolai lowers the monthly tax on sugars and meats. Despicable. But since you had an average outcome, we actually still did gain discipline overall. And Ladislas interrogated town peoples. It seems parents conspired to have their children uh, hide their children from the ritual. But we have discovered that, oh my lord, we actually got a net loss on obedience as a result of that. That is painful. Very painful, I'll be honest with you. But Lord Cadwell is no longer at the point of rebellion. The season's end draws near. A sacrifice must be made. I'm very worried that we are in the red with discipline, honestly. But, Svetlana, you must be gone. Minor virtue, the villagers will be disturbed by Svetlana's death and lose uh, fervor. Major vice, the villagers will be inspired to greater discipline through the purging of the sinner. Now, if we had someone who had, um, well, actually, we could even, <laughs> we could even sacrifice, sacrifice Ladislas to rise obedience if we desperately needed to. We might actually lose this from this one. I, I don't recall if we were on in the red for obedience last season but uh, we'll see this might be a loss to you to this but damn it we're gonna get rid of one major center at least sacrifice well two i suppose there we go we're losing your violence but also losing your embezzlement once again blood everywhere it's what you deserve you scoundrel we sacrifice the life of svetlana in the name of harnabog and the good of our people our condolences to kegni 
It was a just sacrifice, however. House Kegney solemnly mourns Svetlana. House Kegney's approval is minus 30 because they don't like their child being gone, but other houses' approval is plus 5. You know, it, they accept what we did was right. The villagers praise Chernobog for ridding the community of a blighted soul. Plus 15 discipline and minus 10 favor. Oh, sorry, fervor. New season. Rain freezes and hardens as it falls. Criminals and rebels talk openly of rebellion. I must enforce obedience by the end of this season. Very well, I've also got a letter. Vicar Everson argues that priests and penitents shouldn't have to pay for their food, as it is used for Chernobog's glory. Matron Kegney says such a policy would leave her farmers in poverty. Uh, Kegney can offer priests a discount rate. Uh, that would be bad. Um, they won't like it. Vicar, you can afford to pay the farmers. House Everson won't like it. Um, House Everson can just accept it. Sorry. Um, Vicar Everson leaves in a huff, muttering about the greedy Kegney. Discipline, plus five. Oh, thank goodness, obedience, plus five. House Everson approval, minus ten. That is fine. That is fine. We've just got to keep it above that line. Okay, so with that, we need to have a look-see. I hope our advisors serve you well. I hope so, too. Right, let's have a look at you. Knows too much. Could you be a liar? Would you be a liar with no so much? I don't know, but we're going to select you, Nadia, and find out a little bit more about you by observing how you uh, do your job. Tionary, let's select you. Is this a reward or a punishment? Well, it depends on whether you're sinful or not, really. All right, how's Efferson? We've got so many people who are dissatisfied. Um, cynical? No, that's fine. Um, let's find out about you. You're violent and undisciplined. I mean, I'm going to guess at the discipline. Uh, Flirt Ground is pervert. Oh, no. It is penitence would be um, liars. Is anyone here particularly not penitent? No, that's fine. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be taking you anyway. But the Efferson estate. Okay, so let's go for someone that we haven't got know anything about. Wendelin Efferson. Cadwell estate. Uh, they don't like us, so maybe I really shouldn't go for something like this. Uh, gluttonous, I'm going to pick Nikolai just because that's going to help out so much. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm accepting I'm not looking for a sinner there. Linguist, no, we need someone who's not penitent. Um, well, point advisor. Now, I'm, I'm certain that someone in your house is going to have... There's going to be some sort of major sin here. So it's really these three that could be it. Begin the season. I'm not sure how this one's going to go, though. We don't know enough. Right. At the moment, Nikolai, you're going to be coming along. And Tierney and Wendelin. Let's find out about you. Average outcome. You're going a little bit of fervor. Uh, you're ruled to be disciplined. Okay. And we don't know about your vice. Tony works hard, extra hard, skipping many meals and evening leisures. Well done. Um, there we are, discipline plus four. As ever, well done on the penitence there. And uh, discipline not so great, but you know, still a net gain. Penitence. Um, Wendland's behavior had an unknown impact on our community. Uh, Wendland's rumored to be lacking further. You know, it's Wendland's ceremonies aren't as well attended as others. Well, that's not super great. But it's not super bad either. Okay. Please do not be the one I'm looking for. So it really could only be you two with the vice if if I'm looking for the liar. Um, hmm. Right now I do need to find out who it is who is affecting our Who's who's lying? We'll we'll have to see. Uh, work extra hard. Oh dear! You dropped that obedience. Well, it's not you then, the liar either. But that is pretty nasty. Okay. Um, complacent minus ten. That's actually a minor sin. We don't actually have anyone that we should feel 
happy to uh, sacrifice. Ouch. This is a rough time. It's a very rough time. One family is going to be super unhappy by the end of this season. But I deeply need to improve discipline. It is a must. So uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, sorry obedience. You're gonna just be doing this on your own. I think. I guess I could have Cadwell join as well. Maybe. Hmm. It all comes down to whether you do a good job at this point, actually. Uh huh. I mean, ultimately, I do kind of need to know a little bit more about you. So let's let's actually look into this as well. And begin. Very well done. You discovered a cache of old world books. They burned merrily in the town square. You were discovered to be a convict. Nadia tells stories of redemption after a life of misguided crime. Well done, Nadia. But you do poll the town on their thoughts about a library. That's terrible. Terrible. Great outcome. Fania extracted an anonymous confession from a heretic, removing their tongue as penitence. Banya was discovered to be ascetic. Banya grows even thinner, losing all interest in food and sleep. Well done. Your your discipline is is acknowledged. Banya pulls the town on their thoughts. Why do you want what library? Isn't it good enough that I'm telling you the stuff you need to know? Trust in your high priest. Except when he has to pick from a bunch of people who are totally not particularly sinful to select someone to die. <laughs> oh my lord. The season's end draws near. Sacrifice must be made to protect the village. Ah, oh, it's time for a holy martyr, I fear. A holy martyr. That is what we need. Yeah, you'd become rebellious. Mm. You wouldn't become rebellious, but... Uh, I can't I can't afford to lose an ascetic, no. Um, you're already a minus 40. You wouldn't necessarily be too, totally bad, but... We'd lose a chunk of ignorance for you. A convict there. You'd become rebellious. Uncertain vice. Yeah, we've got no no evidence of their transgression, so we need someone that we can actually pin something on. So, Wendelin, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Wendelin. You must die for the greater good. Chernobog demands a sacrifice, and Chernobog will get one. Goodbye, Wendelin. Wendelin the not sinful. Not quite virtuous either, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to select you, but... Sacrifice for a minor sin. House Efferson simmers with quiet resentment. House Efferson approval minus 50. Other houses approval plus 5. The villagers speak of Wendelin as a holy martyr perishing for the greater good. Ignorance minus 10. Fervor plus 5. Discipline and penitence are super good at the moment, but we are struggling. The earth is dark and inviting, as spring has once again arrived. The village is growing too curious about the outside world. I must tend to their ignorance by the end of this season. But that will have to be in the next episode. Now, this is the sort of game where things can go downhill super fast. So the next episode might be fairly short in this game. And then we'll start another one. So uh, do remember to let me know if you would like a name. And I will only be accepting names that tell me which house they belong to. So don't forget that very important detail as you'll all be going into a random list for that house and then uh, we'll be populating the the uh, members of that house from the list as usual using random.org. But that is going to be it from me. I do hope you've enjoyed this new game and are looking forward to the next episode as I am. But until then, and as ever, do take care of yourselves. And remember everyone, cool kids don't read books. <laughs>